Air pollution is now recognised as the single biggest environmental threat to human health. The problem is, not enough people know about it, or know how dangerous it is. What makes it more difficult is that it's mostly invisible. We've gathered a group of doctors and pharmacists from all over the UK to tell you more. In the UK, 36 to 40,000 people die from air pollution related illness every year. There's growing proof that air pollution leads to miscarriage, low birth weight and premature birth. There are many gases and tiny particles mixed into the air that contribute to air pollution. The main ones affecting health are nitrogen dioxide and particulate matter. Nitrogen dioxide is a gas, with the biggest source being fumes from vehicles. Particulate matter is a mixture of solids and liquids floating in the air. The smaller they get, the more dangerous they are, and they're more likely to enter the bloodstream through the lungs. The particles are often described by their size, and so-called PM10 or PM2.5. They are both much smaller than the width of a human hair. The biggest causes of particulate pollution are domestic wood-burning stoves and coal fires, although many things cause these tiny particles, including dust, sand, vehicle fumes, rubber from tyres and metal from brakes. Even here, on a day like today in Inverness, clean highland air apparently, but the air pollution levels were moderate overall, um, and we had two spikes to very high, um, both at the school gate and, interestingly, uh, here on our own street. Um, so to be honest, I'm pretty staggered by those results. So I'm on my cycle to work and testing the air pollution as I go. Um, unsurprisingly, on the busier roads so far, it's been very high air pollution or moderate. And uh, as I go down the less busy roads with bits of greenery, it goes down to low again. Air pollution is a massive social injustice. For those least well off, that are most at risk of these conditions and living in the most polluted areas. In 2013, a nine-year-old girl called Ella Kissy Deborah died following a severe asthma attack. Ella lived on the South Circular in my hometown of London and was exposed to illegal levels of nitrogen dioxide and high levels of PM2.5. The main source of her exposure was traffic emissions. She was the first person in the world to have air pollution listed as a cause of death on her death certificate. In a report to prevent future deaths, Coroner Philip Barlow said the government should reduce existing targets for particulate matter to bring them in line with World Health Organization guidelines. The WHO advises a yearly average concentration of PM2.5 under 5 micrograms per cubic metre of air. The government is proposing the legally binding limit in England not exceed 10 micrograms per cubic metre of air by 2040. This is not low enough or quick enough. Scotland's existing target is 10 micrograms per cubic metre of air, much more ambitious than England but still not in line with World Health Organisation guidelines. A recent scientific report advises that 10 micrograms per cubic metre of air can realistically be achieved in England by 2030. This target is the minimum we should be aiming for. The WHO guidelines for annual mean concentration of NO2 is 10 micrograms per cubic metre of air. Current UK law requires it must not exceed 40 micrograms per cubic metre of air. It's four times higher than the WHO guidelines. You can put your postcode into addresspollution.org to find out what air pollution is like at your address. These are the annual average readings from addresspollution.org for some of our GP surgeries. Once we breathe in these gases and particles, they can enter the bloodstream and reach every part of the body. Air pollution affects every part of your body. It causes and worsens high blood pressure, stroke, angina, asthma, COPD, and infections relating to breathing like pneumonia and COVID-19, diabetes, dementia and lung cancer. So my flow monitor has just told me that the air quality index is 118, um, which is classed as very high according to uh, WHO classification. Children's health is more at risk to the effects of air pollution because their bodies are still developing. This affects them from their lungs to their brains, even how well they learn. 
60% of the pollution that children breathe in each day is taken in during the school run. I'm outside my daughter's school, which is next to a main road, and the nitrous dioxide levels are showing 144. As I ride away from home towards my daughter's primary school, just around the corner, we can see the monitors reading very high. Now you know, what can you do about it? You can reduce your contribution to air pollution. Walk, cycle or scoot whenever you can. It has other massive health benefits. Ask yourself, do I really need a car? If the answer is yes, do I need to drive as much as I currently do? Could I use public transport instead? Is it possible to switch to an electric vehicle? If you stop your car, switch your engine off. Do not idle your motor. You can reduce your exposure to air pollution. The air pollution inside the car can be worse than outside. Which is another good reason to walk, cycle or scoot. Use quieter streets and paths to keep away from heavily polluted traffic. Avoid home burning. The worst culprits are log burners and open fires. This reduces your exposure to air pollution as well as reducing your contribution. Be political. Call on your MP to support clean air laws to reduce air pollution in line with the WHO guidance. Call on your school to apply for school streets to reduce the amount of traffic around the school at drop-off and pick-up times. Support clean air zones. These are the current UK clean air zones. We support the expansion of the London Ultra Low Emission Zone. We all have the right to breathe clean air. Together we can reduce air pollution, we can protect ourselves and the most vulnerable in communities. Clean the air. Clean the air. Clean the air. Clean the air. Act now. Just talking can make so much difference, even though these discussions are hard and changing our behaviour feels even harder. Share this video, spread the word, reduce your contribution to air pollution in any way that you can. We all have busy lives. Some will be able to do more than others. This isn't about judging each other. This is about what kind of society do we want to live in? I want to live in a society where people look after each other, but the bigger necessary changes come from government. The government need to make it easier and more affordable for all of us to take clean air decisions. This is a national health emergency. As a doctor, I implore you, protect my patients, protect my neighbours, and protect my children. Clean the air. Clean the air.